Is tithing to the local church actually a form of giving? Or is it a form of paying? Hi, welcome to today's little lesson. This will be the third little lesson we've been talking about the subject of tithing. Very common, uh, you know, a subject amongst uh, Christians who are trying to follow the Bible, and particularly pastors who um, need money. And so I'm questioning the very basis of what so many people believe that tithing, first of all, the tithe belongs to the local church. It's not a biblical idea at all. Anyone who says so is fooling themselves and they ought to be challenged on it in a, a loving way. If you're going to extrapolate Malachi chapter 3, you know, verses 8 through 12, you, you, you'd have to say the tithe, if you're going to tithe at all, it belongs to those whom God has called to serve him in ministry. And this is contained in scripture. You know, Paul wrote, whoever is taught the word, let him share all good things with him who teaches. Little guys like me who are not pastors, I was at one time. And may I tell you, I was a fairly honest pastor, although not entirely. But I can remember saying to my congregations, I cannot tell you that your tithe belongs to the local church. So at least I was that, that honest. But little guys like me, teachers who are out there and people benefit by our ministries, people never think about giving a tithe to them or a, even a part of their tithe. And same thing is true for apostles, what we maybe might refer to today as missionaries and evangelists, right? Uh, you know, and prophets, if you believe that they're for today. There isn't any reason in the world why part of people's tithes who want to tithe couldn't go to those other ministry gifts because they would be the equivalent to the Levites under the law of Moses. And as I've already said to you, I would never ever tell anyone to restrict themselves to 10%. Jesus told us lay up treasure in heaven. So of course you wanna lay up as much as possible because that's the only place where we can lay up an eternal investment. Everything we lay up on here is destined to perish and we'll leave it behind one day, okay? So I've covered that. So here's a foundational question about giving in itself. You know, pastors are often honest enough. This is honest. They'll say, you know, the scripture talks about paying tithes. And I wish they'd take that thought to its logical end, because if they did, then they'd go on to say, so really, it's not giving at all. It's a payment for services rendered. You're paying your tithe to your local church. Mm -hmm. All right, fine. I'm glad you're supporting the services there that primarily benefit you and your family and others who are part of that local church who are also paying their tithes because cumulatively together, you should all be pitching in to pay for the expenses that are incurred. But the early church, for the most part, had no such expenses, meeting at homes or in public places. They didn't have to have special buildings. They didn't have youth pastors. They didn't have children's ministers. They didn't have secretaries. They were focused on making disciples, teaching them to obey all that Christ commanded. And you don't need a building to do that. I'm sorry to say that, but you don't. And again, I'm not anyone's judge. Everyone has to answer to Jesus themselves. One day I had my own crisis as a pastor recognizing that, you know, I was not following a biblical pattern. But um, in the early church, the t no tithe, no giving ever supported any mortgage payment or, or any youth pastor, any children's pastor, any secretary, any church administrator, all those things that have become so necessary in modern wealthy countries uh, and wealthy churches. And it's not, if you think you're laying up treasure in paying tithes to your church, I submit to you, really, in reality, there you're laying up maybe a little bit of treasure, whatever escapes your church through the missions program or through the benevolence program that actually doesn't benefit you but benefits somebody else, then you're getting credit for that in heaven. But paying for the mortgage and paying for the lights and paying for the air conditioning and the heating, all that stuff is just for you and the other people who are there. So that's not giving, that's just paying your dues. So what do I suggest you do? Well, I think you can probably figure it out yourself. 
But uh, ought to look at the Bible and prayerfully consider what would Jesus have us do? Well, he would have us lay up treasure in heaven. He defined specifically how to do that, didn't he? If you look up the scriptures about when Jesus mentioned laying up treasures in heaven, it's usually in the context of giving to the poor, right? Sure. Jesus said to the rich young ruler, you know, sell what you possess, give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. He didn't say pay the mortgage payment on your church. Give no, give to the poor, and you'll have treasure in heaven. So that doesn't benefit you, Mr. Rich Young Ruler. That benefits the poor, and you're laying up treasure in heaven when you do that. So that's what I got. That's what I started doing, you know, and I give a, 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 a portion of my income, and I give it to ministries that are serving the least of these, because I read Matthew 25 <laughs> when Jesus talked about the future judgment of the sheep and the goats, and I started doing the bulk of my giving to help the least of these and also to help spread the gospel to those who haven't heard it, because I want people to be saved. And if your giving doesn't involve somehow supporting People like the early church supported. They supported the Apostle Paul. There are scriptures about that. And he said, I'm so happy for your, to the Philippians, I'm so happy for your participation in the gospel. You're involved because you're supporting me, the guy that brought you the gospel in the first place and now who's taken it to the uttermost parts of the earth. You're involved because you're supporting me. I don't have to work sewing tents. I can devote myself fully to the work of the Lord. Well, Paul wasn't a pastor. And early Christians were sending money to an apostle. So when folks say, well, the time, well, your giving should all be centered here. And then we make decisions as to where it should go. Sorry. Sorry, Charlie. That's not biblical. Okay. Much more to say on this subject. I wrote a very controversial e-teaching one time called Tithe to the Local Church. And if you go to davidservant.com and go to the search bar and type in anything that resembles that, you'll probably find that controversial article and it, you might thank me for it. I hope so. Okay, hope you click that little like thing down there at the bottom under my, under my video here and I hope to see you next time.